Hey everybody, Arn Hawaii here, and um, I'm gonna show you guys the top things that you need to understand about audio filters in OBS Studio. Now, these are gonna answer questions that I get all the time. And basically, I'm just gonna tell you what I think are the only three filters that you actually need to use. I'll spare you the usual introduction, except to say I'm an eSports producer. I use OBS Studio every single day at work, and um, I use these filters every single day. Now I said three filters, but I'm also gonna include a little audio know-how bonus tip at the end. So make sure you watch the whole video and uh, get that extra advice. All right, so how do you even add filters in OBS? I'm gonna show you right now. You go to your audio mixer and then you find the, uh, the thing that you want to add the filters to and you click the little gear next to it. Oh, quick tip. If you wanna display this horizontally like I have, all you do is you right click and you choose between vertical layout and not vertical layout. I would suggest that if you have more than like five or six things going on in here, use a vertical layout and then you can scale this to fit as many, you know, in one view as possible. That way you can see everything. But if you only have a few things, I kind of like the horizontal view. Anyways, to add filters, go to the audio uh, input that you want to add a filter to and click the gear and click filters. And when you're in here, you click the plus and then the filter type that you want. One of the three that I'm gonna show you is the gain filter. And this is probably the simplest of the three. When you add a gain filter, it's gonna start at zero. And basically what you're gonna do is you're saying that, you know, if I have this maxed out and it's still not enough, I want it to go higher, then uh, if, you, if you can't do that in other ways, like at the actual device, like at the microphone or at your, uh, the box that you, you know, your soundboard that you plug it into, or you can't do it elsewhere in the software. If this is your last resort, then a gain filter is gonna give you that extra, that extra room to increase it. So you're just gonna drag this up. And I honestly would not suggest that you do it more than two or three at a time and then test to make sure that you're not going overboard. Um, but that's how you get more once you've already maxed out in the mixer. Now, if for some reason you need to go the other way and you need to pull something back and you don't have some other means of doing it prior to doing it with a filter, then you can just drag this the other way and it will start to go negative. Now, I want you to watch what happens down here in that mic area, that the, that, the active one, uh, when I stop speaking. You see how there's that low rumble there? That indicates that there's some noise, right? And that noise can be generated by a lot of things. It could be environmental factors like the fans of your computer, uh, the noise of your air conditioner in your room, uh, or other environmental sounds. Now, you can reduce or even eliminate that rumble using a noise gate. So let's add a noise gate filter by clicking the plus and clicking noise gate, and then okay. Now the defaults may do the job, so let's pause and we'll sit silently and see if it cancels that rumble. And look at that. Basically, it has said that uh, at this threshold, right, any sound that's below 32 decibels should just be pushed all the way down to like negative infinity, right? So it's just saying like anything that happens underneath this zone, to just mute it, right? Now the open threshold, which I usually have set a bit above the closed threshold, is what tells the gate that's suppressing that noise when to open up again and allow sound through again. Now, there's one thing to keep in mind about noise gates. If you have a lot of noise, then a noise gate is going to close off that noise. But then as soon as you start talking and the gate opens up again, that noise is also going to flood through. So you need to do everything you can to remove as much of that noise before you apply any filters, right? If your AC is noisy, maybe you suffer through it for a little while to turn it off. Uh, if there's somebody noisy in the other room, close the door, or ask them to be quiet. You may even consider doing some soundproofing in the space that you're recording or streaming in. Foam tiles are actually really cheap at about a buck a tile for a square foot tile. And I'll put a link in the description below so that you can see what I'm talking about. Um, but they're pretty great. Maybe even a rug, if you have a tiled or wooden floor, over the most open space in the room will help a lot. 
But my point is reduce all of the external sources of noise and then let software and filters be the last step of reduction that you do. All right, so now the last filter I'm gonna show you is the compression filter. And this is the, probably the more complicated one for people to understand what it does. Uh, and I'll do my best to demonstrate it. But basically what a compressor is gonna do is it's going to say, I want the highest high to be pushed down. And I want the lowest low to be pushed up so that the actual range from when I'm speaking at the softest to when I'm speaking at the loudest is only gonna live within a, a tight zone rather than a broad range. So let's go ahead and add a compressor. And I tend to feel like the defaults are usually not good enough. So what I want you to do is start with these settings. At ratio, set it all the way down to two to one. That's saying for every two decibels that I'm going too high, I want it pushed down by one, right? So if we did one to one, then it would say for every one decibel of height, I want it to come back down one. Now the threshold is just the area in which it's gonna operate, right? So you can probably go down to maybe the mid 20s and experiment from there. I think that's usually where I like to start. Attack and release you can leave alone. But it's good to understand what they do. Attack is how much time it takes for the compressor to act once it uh, hits that threshold where it needs to start, you know, uh, doing its thing. Uh, and then release is how much time it should uh, stop compressing once it no longer needs to be acting on what's going on. You can think of it as sort of fading in and out of influence on the sound. Now the output gain is the last thing you would fuss with. And that's basically saying that if I've compressed so much at the top that the whole thing kind of gets too low, well, the output gain is just gonna boost everything back up a bit, okay? So I'm gonna close this and you can see that the compressor is holding my voice nicely in this middle range here between the top of the green and sort of the middle of the yellow. Now. I'm going to disable the compressor by going back into filters and I'm just going to hide it. So I've kept my settings, but it's not acting on the sound right now. And as you can see now, as I speak, it's hitting into the red. So I know that when I'm speaking loudly and I turn the compressor back on, it's doing its job to suppress that height a bit. You see, we got a little bit of that top end pushed down. Now, if I added output gain, it's going to push the whole thing up again. Same thing if I bring it down, it's gonna bring the whole range way down. So the compression is doing its job and now the output gain is just gonna allow me to dial in where I want that, want that peak to really rest. With all things, I recommend that you test, right? So do a recording, right? If you're gonna stream, record first and then listen to it and ask yourself if you think it's what you want or not. And if it's not, then go back in and tweak a little bit. Now, I also think it's important for you to understand that I don't think you need to have all three of these filters on every microphone or every audio source. I just want you to understand what they do and use them where they're needed, okay? Where you think it's gonna do the best work for you. Okay, so I remember saying that I was gonna give you some bonus audio advice, and that has to do with sync. Right? So if you ever notice sometimes when someone's lips don't match the words that you're hearing through their microphone, well, you can adjust that by right clicking in this audio mixer area and going to advanced audio properties. And in here, you're looking for sync offset. And if this were set to zero, then my uh, lip movements might not match my microphone uh, because sometimes the signal of the audio is getting through OBS faster than the video is, right? And if that happens, then you need to delay the audio a little bit and al allow the video to catch up. So that's where you're gonna add sync offset. Now, I like to add it 200 milliseconds at a time. So that's a fifth of a second, right? Because a thousand milliseconds is a second. So I add 200 at a time, and then just like I said before, do a recording and then see if they're syncing up better. And then if you need to add more, add more. If you go too far, back off. But there you go, there's your little bonus tip. 
It's not a filter, but it's useful information in order to really manage your audio. There you have it. Those are the three filters that are pretty much the only ones I think you need to use as you get started uh, fine tuning your audio in OBS Studio. If you like the video, please consider giving it a like and maybe even subscribing to my channel because I'm trying to push out regular tips all the time. And uh, so if you subscribe and you hit that bell, you'll get notifications when I upload new videos. Thanks for watching. Welcome, and thanks for calling the R in Hawaii YouTube hotline. In a few words, tell us what you're calling about. You can say things like, my stream won't start, or, how did you do that thing with your webcam? I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Press zero to reach an operator who can assist you.